If you look up the word procrastination in the dictionary, it defines it as putting off doing something, especially out of habitual carelessness or laziness. Well, I'm afraid that's something I've been guilty of too. I've wanted to do this interview for ages, but I kept putting it off and putting it off. But finally, I can put it off no longer. So let me introduce you to Dr. Piers Steele. He's an industrial organizational psychologist who's reviewed all the literature there is about procrastination. And he joins me now from Calgary, Alberta. So Dr. Steele, I know it's pretty common, but why do we procrastinate? Well, procrastination is an example of a more general phenomenon. Um, basically, we're, we've got a strong tendency to value pleasures that we can receive today much, much more than those we can receive tomorrow. And procrastination is just merely an instance of that. We um, tend to put off, for example, things that um, whose rewards are in the future in favor of these other kind of more frivolous activities whose rewards are right now. Is there a biological function behind it? Well, yeah, it actually it's what was very adaptive. I mean, if you go back, and you can actually see the same type of things when we've done comparative animal research. And the bird in the hand, you know, something smaller but present, is worth two in the bush. If, for example, you know, you're in the hunter-gathering society and you stumble along a food source, um, you better consume that right there and then, instead of kind of waiting for something bigger to come around in the future. And this was adapted for such a long period of time, it actually kind of got set in our motivational topography. So just how prevalent is it then in today's society? Um, about 15% of people chronically procrastinate. 95% of us do it all the time. Um, historical references, though, go back at least 3,000 years. But most recently, in the last 25 years, there's been a big rise. About why is that? Why is that? Um, well, level of temptations. It's a really big predictor. We have a lot of things that we could be doing other than the work at hand in an instant. Uh, television sets, uh, web surfing. A lot of these things pull us away from what we think we should be doing. So why are some people then, you mentioned 15% there, why are some people chronic procrastinators and other people it just affects them now and again? Well, there's some individual characteristics that kind of affect procrastination. Um, one of the biggest one of these is impulsiveness. It's basically how much you value today over that of tomorrow. Impulsive people are very spontaneous, can be a very good characteristic, a lot of fun to be around, but it's even harder for them to get motivated about future events in the present. And what are the differences, though, in the, the brain patterns, maybe, between people who procrastinate a lot and people who don't? Well, yeah, it, it can be actually traced back partly to, to brain. I mean, they've done some genetic studies, about 22% of procrastination is due to actually your genes, or at least that's a common source. But um, also we're trying to do in psychobiology, we're actually trying to trace it down what areas of the brain specifically. Um, anterior cingulate, we're just starting to look at that area, but it looks very promising. And what about differences in the thought processes? Well, procrastinators tend to emphasize the negative side of whatever they have to do. Those people who are better at stopping themselves from procrastinating when they become some type of difficult task, they really kind of try and look at the bright side of it. They attend to what's good about it and try and overlook what's bad. This is something kind of very common. Actually, if you can train people to kind of pay attention to the positive side of whatever task they're doing, they're less likely to procrastinate. Now, you are the expert on procrastination, so you must be the man I should ask for advice then. If I have a task that I keep putting off, how do I stop myself procrastinating and get on with it? Oh, that's a million dollar question. All right. Um, I can give you three pieces of advice. One, energy regulation. Basically, when in town you get tired, um, due to allergies or maybe a dip in your circadian rhythms, that's the time of day, tasks can be more difficult to do. You've got to make sure, you've got to really regulate that. And choose when during the day and even when during the week that you feel most energetic to start in your harder tasks. A second, uh, goal setting. Basically, you've got to break down large, difficult goals into smaller, more palatable, bite-sized pieces. Something that you can do today instead of something that, that's going to take you several days to do is better. Um, it's like taking a book. Instead of thinking of going through it all, just do a chapter on it. I can do a chapter, read this chapter today. And finally, you want routines. Um, basically, procrastination is due to kind of making making bad decisions and sometimes you want to you want to kind of get a routine which kind of prevents you from making a decision or lets you make the decision easier like an exercise program very difficult to start 
very difficult to continue, actually, when after you've kind of made to take a break from it, so I'd say for due to vacation. But if you keep on going at it, it just does itself. And what about that TV, though? Well, that's a proximity of temptations. That's another, that's another big aspect. If you have a lot of temptations around you, then that's something that's much, it's very easy for you to kind of choose to do. It's like dieting. If you have ice cream in the house, you're probably going to eat it. But are you really going to get in the car and go five minutes down the road to pick it up? Some people, for example, deal with it by just unplugging their TV set or taking the batteries out of the remote control. Delays it a little bit, makes it a little harder for you to get to, and sometimes that's enough. Well, some great advice there. Thank you very much for talking to me today, Dr. Steele. Oh, my pleasure. That was Dr. Piers Steele. He's an industrial organizational psychologist from the University of Calgary.